Welcome back to the Star City Culture Committee, um, the flagship Daily Nebraskan Culture Podcast. My name is David Berman, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts Jenna Thompson and Mark Champion. Uh, how are you guys doing today? Um, how, how you guys been navigating the world lately? Oh, just swell, I would say. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, you know. I that's real bad at small talk. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's just like times ten too because it's recorded. But mm, yeah, you know that's okay. Um, <laughs> what, have you, what have you been using for navigation recently? A compass. Oh, um, I just I just like to take my chances. That's right. bold. Interesting. Like I'm a GPS kind of guy. Um, but but it's, it's, it seems Mark is more old school with a compass, making a sundial, well, you know. <laughs> I actually don't use a compass, but I think that'd be pretty cool if I did. Like those those old vans with the giant bubble compasses up on the dashboard. Like there's nothing cooler than that, you know. Oh, absolutely. And you don't have to charge it. <laughs> Just saying. Maybe we should all go back to that, you know. Yeah. I'm in. Time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> simpler time well anyway um we are we are not a navigation podcast we are not an, an old-timey compass podcast we are a, a culture podcast so today um we're going to be talking a little bit uh local music um and then just kind of music in general what, what what music have you guys been listening to lately i've personally been obsessed with the new pagan athlete single burner it's uh absolutely insane I don't know if you guys know those dudes at all, but we had them in the office earlier in the year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's two brothers. One of them plays a tiny Casio keyboard, and then one of them just goes insane on the drums. Uh, and this new song is, like, uh, strange. There's, like, weird phone beeping going on in it. And it's uh, hits hard, hits weird, hits good. <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. That's good. How about, how about you, Jenna? Um, not a local artist, but um, today I've been listening to. Do you guys have, know who No Name is? I do not. She. It's it's not exactly rap, but kind of. It's like a super unique kind of style. Um, kind of like soul with like spoken word. I don't know, but mm -hmm. it's very it's very unique. Uh, um, and she put out a single not too long ago, but I hadn't heard of her before. So I've just been listening to that today as I've been commuting. So sweet. Okay. Awesome. Um, hey, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a big Broadway nerd. Um, so I just, I, you know, I listen to a lot of Broadway. Um, that's just kind of my jam. Um, and so, you know, Hamilton was out on Disney Plus last week. So I've been jamming, I've been Jamilton into a lot of Hamilton. So. Oh my God. That was really cool. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, some um, of my best work, I would say. But. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen that before it was on Disney Plus? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, really? I saw it in Chicago like three summers ago. Um, With like the original cast? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I don't know how long ago it came out, but yeah, and um, yeah. So yeah, we saw it in Chicago, um, and yeah, but it was really cool to see it, see the recorded version, um, with the original how does it cast. Compare? Um, I think you definitely get a lot more of the emotion and just kind of nuance to it, especially because it is filmed and you get mm -hmm. close-ups of actors, and you know, yeah. you don't you don't really get that unless you're sitting really close um so yeah so that was really cool and just to it just kind of helps you know because i've listened to the music for five years obviously um but it's just it's just really nice to kind of visualize everything so yeah but yeah so way, um, i had one more thing the way they say alexander hamilton in the commercials just absolutely kills me every time so i i know i haven't seen it yet and i know i'm terrible for not having seen it yet but i'm planning on watching it soon in in what way does it does it so it it just it gets you going like you're excited it, it, it you know it just you builds up. up so well and then it's yeah. like Alexander Hamilton it's like you know yeah it just 
It's really good. That's his name. They got to, they got to hit it hard. So. Yeah. Of course I have no idea like what the context is or <laughs> I, I, is that even in the musical or is it, that? Just- yep. <laughs> that, it's, it's, it's the first song. They, they say, they say that even the first song. <laughs> I figured it was probably important. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I've never seen it. So. Well, you should get on that, man. I know. Yeah, I will. Cool. All right. Well, so for our guest today on the Star City Culture Committee, um, we have uh, Noah Flourish and Ross Grebe. They're a musician producer duo uh, based in Lincoln. Um, they've been making great music over the past few years, and uh, they're just getting ready to drop a new EP that's called Book of Stories on July 31st. Um, so yeah, the, those two joined us today for a few questions and a mini Zoom concert. So uh yeah, without without further ado, let's let's get into it. All right, so we are here with Ross and Noah. Uh, how are you gentlemen doing today? Oh, we're doing so good. Doing great. Wonderfully. Beautifully. Thank you. That's that is awesome to hear. Um so yeah, thank you for uh for joining us on the episode today. Um and so yeah, I think we'll just get started by having you guys talk a little a little bit about your backgrounds and kind of how you both got into music. Cool. cool. I'm going to take yeah, I'm taking it. So, um, I'm Noah Flourish, um, and I've been doing music, uh, I guess how I got into it originally, it's actually kind of a funny story. So, um, I, I don't come from a very musical family, um, but when my oldest brother, his name's Paul, not that that matters, but when he went off to college, he got, he got a banjo um, as like a parting gift from my parents. We were like really into Mumford and Sons at the time, and I was like, wow, that is the coolest thing like what a, what a sweet gift um so the following christmas i asked for a banjo and got one and i, I sort of like like i said I, we i idolized mumford and sons at the time and and they could just absolutely shred on this this is a ukulele not a banjo for people watching but um they would absolutely shred and i would try to learn these songs and i i just couldn't because it was like the first musical instrument i ever picked up and i decided okay well if i can't play their songs I might as well like write my own. And so I started writing music on the banjo of all instruments, which was absolutely ridiculous. Now that was in like middle school. Once I got into high school, I picked up the ukulele, the guitar, the piano. Now I'm still very amateur level at all of those instruments, but I know enough now to, to write and record and stuff like that. So, so when I got through high school, I had, by the time I'd finished high school, I'd probably written like a good 50 songs. And some of them were good, and some of them were bad. Um, and then by the time I finished high school, I decided, oh, I really want to do music for the rest of my life. So I was a music composition major for a year down at UNL. And um, it was great. I had a great time. I learned a lot. Um, but I was writing a lot more chamber style, like piano cello duets and things like that and I'm a songwriter. So I decided that wasn't really for me. I'm a business major now, which is funny. I actually have a lot more time to work on the music I like to do now as a business major. Um, and so that's what I'm, what I'm still doing now. I'm gonna be a senior um, this year. And then Ross, you can kind of talk about yeah. yourself. Uh, so I'm Ross Grebe. I'm Noah's producer. I got into music. Um, I got really good at Guitar Hero when I was in elementary school and from there my parents were like you should take guitar lessons and so I started playing guitar when I was like 11 I was obsessed with it I practiced like eight hours a day in high school um came to college and like basically was like I want to learn how to record my own stuff so I don't have to keep like paying people to record music for me and so I bought the software spent eight hours a day like learning how to record and produce music um I'm also a business major so I don't have homework so I had plenty of time to like do that um, and then met Noah my sophomore year and just started recording all of his stuff. And I guess we've been recording and writing and doing music together ever since. Yeah. So we put our first song out about a year and a half ago. Um, it's December 8th, I believe, 2019, a song called 2018. Girl- 2018. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was, um, called Girl from the Sidewalk and it just kind of blew up on Spotify and, we kind of decided, okay, we have a nice thing going. Might as well keep it going. And that's, that's what we've, that's what we've done. So, yeah. I was just going to ask, how did you two meet? 
Oh, okay. Good question. You take, that's your so bet. My sophomore year of college, I'd been producing for three months and I was horrible. And so my strategy to fix that was I basically DM'd every single person I knew that like sang. And I was like, hey, my name's Ross. I'll produce a song for you. I'll write a song for you, I'll, whatever you want. Like I just want to get better at producing. And so I literally probably DM'd like 90 people that year and did songs with half of them. No, it was the best. And so I was on Twitter. Yes. And I saw this dude go like Nebraska Twitter viral. With, like, it was like 50 retweets. 50, 60 <laughs> retweets. And I was like, dang, like this dude can sing. And like it was like an original <clears throat> song or whatever. So I DM'd him on Twitter. Um, it's like, hey, I'm a producer. I'll produce a song for you, whatever. Um, and then he, Noah came over to my parents' house over Christmas break, my sophomore year, your freshman year. Mm. Um, we made some demos, never finished any of those songs. But then he joined my fraternity. We're both in Pike. And Pike. Pike. nine months later, after like initially meeting, we started actually working on the song he mentioned, Girl from the Sidewalk, which came out, I guess, a year after we met for the first time. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was from Twitter. It was from the DMs. It's all going down in the DMs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. <That's funny. clears throat> so it was all, you just reached out to him what prompted you to like start reaching out to people like that i mean honestly like i just knew if i wanted to get good at producing i was gonna have to make a ton of music because, yeah like, kind of like coming from guitar i was like okay like i know i got i got good at guitar and it was by playing scales really bad for <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of hours until i could play them good so i was like if i want to produce songs good i'm gonna have to produce a ton of songs for a ton of people to kind of get through all of like the the bad stuff until I'm like good enough and luckily like we waited long enough before we actually made any songs together that like yeah, you know I was doing. through like the bad <laughs> crappy producer stage already by the time we were working together which was a blessing we got lucky yeah. with that. <laughs> but this is how it's how I saw like that's the only way I'm going to get good it's kind of like writing it's like the only way to like get good at writing songs is to write dozens and dozens of bad yeah. songs yeah <laughs> makes sense uh so what is that song creating process like for you guys like do you guys share some of the writing process or yeah so so some songs we've actually written together like the lyrics and the and the chord structure and everything we've actually written together a lot of the songs i say the vast majority as of right now that i have out under my artist name i've written and i i'll make a rough demo so i'll play it on guitar or piano or maybe record something at at home just at like my home studio which is a microphone and a computer um mm -hmm. and i'll bring whatever i have into ross and then we flesh out the song together that's how it goes for the majority of songs now i have simpler songs that like um i don't pick the music i don't know if you've heard that one but that one is just piano and vocals so like i i had a i spent a day with a pianist and we got like a nice track for it. And I basically just brought it into Ross and he EQ, he just makes it things make sound sense. nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, Wait. other times, other times I'll bring in a song and I'll be like, Ross, I have no idea what to do with this. And then we build the song together, you know, instrument wise, soundscape wise. Um, and then other times <laughs> we write together. So we'll, we'll, start from scratch on a song together and a lot of the songs that we'll be putting out in the fall mm -hmm. so after this this upcoming ep are songs that we've actually done together completely from scratch nice so we're all across the board in terms of yeah how <laughs> how a song can come together with with us too just because we've been working together for so long and we also have very similar i guess um agendas in terms of like what we want to get done and how we like our songs to sound that when we work together it's very easy to communicate and and put something of quality together yeah well, so yeah very well said Noah if you're if you consider yourself a songwriter Ross do you consider yourself mostly a producer or a songwriter yourself or where do you prefer no, to I both them? in my Instagram bio uh, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I had to pick one. I mean, I'm probably more of a producer than a songwriter. Uh, yeah, that's where I'm. I'm like most comfortable. Like, like that's like what I do all day, and I love writing. 
but there's, I produce for a lot more people than I write with. Like Noah is like mm-hmm. one of the, honestly the only person I've written with recently. Like I love writing with Noah and I, I write alone and stuff, but like I, I'm mostly a producer. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. I'd say I produce a little bit too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no. What other, what other labels do you use? So, so I I use the title more than anything else is I just like an artist, you know. And then people will be like, "What kind of music?" And then I say, "Singer songwriter." So like I'm the singer and the songwriter in a lot of these in a lot of these circumstances. Um, I would probably never be like I'm a producer because that gives off totally the wrong skill set for me. <laughs> um, I mean, I still like, you I make a lot stuff. of, yeah, yeah. And I also make a lot of like the musical decisions that go into these songs, you know, which is like in the, cl- in the old sense right. of production, like yeah, producers. Pro- producer is a tough word. Cause like it means everything now, like back in the day, producer just meant like creative director. Basically he's the guy in the room that's kind of like telling everyone what to do and like has the big vision. Now that word is kind of like merged with the guy at the computer that does all the technical stuff. Like an engineer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah. both of those things. I know what you do some of the technical stuff, mm-hmm. but in like a big sense, like old fashioned, like old style version of the word producer, you're very much a producer in yeah. that sense as well. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. That's cool. I hope it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. I think that was well said as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so th- this is a bit more of like an abstract question, but why is music something that is important to both of you? You want to th- take that one first? Uh, I got it. <laughs> um, so, okay. Like I said, I didn't come from a very musical family in terms of talent, um, but I did come from a musical family in terms of appreciation. Okay. So I, from a very early age, I was listening to some like very high quality music. And that's thanks to my mom, I would say primarily. So I was listening to like, you know, Fleetwood Mac, Janis Joplin. Um, and then my older brothers got me really into to indie music. Mom, Fred and Sons, but I, I swear we listened to them like a year before they popped off. Um, <laughs> and that was like my first taste of like being ahead of the curve musically. And that felt really good. Um, it feels even better now when you're writing a song and you can tease it and be like, this is going to be a big deal or whatever. Um, but music is important for a lot of different reasons. The appreciation of it, like that, that side of things sort of helps you understand how music affects an individual and a community in all these different senses. As an artist, you also have this wild perspective because you get to see how your music affects your listeners right i just showed ross like five i mean probably 10 minutes ago i showed him someone tagged me in their instagram story and it's this high school kid and his girlfriend on like a quarantine prom date and they were playing my music in the background so they tagged me and that like that's the kind of stuff that makes me like tear up it's so cute um but that's like a very micro scale like very zoomed in how does music affect people kind of kind of narrative when you look at big picture um music is just it's one of the oldest arts and it's i think in my opinion one that has like such a rich history and such a diverse history that that almost every culture um, historic culture, not prehistoric culture, but almost every historic culture has some sort of um, style or niche of playing. And I think that's such an interesting thing. And it's such a great way of communicating culture and expression. And I don't know, music is very rich and I could talk about it for forever. <laughs> um, but I think it has the ability to to change, like, to literally change lives. Um, and that's why it's so cool to make it. Dang. That was a really big... I was all over the place. Romantic, answer, idealistic but... answer. That... I don't know all of that. But I will... <laughs> um, for me, it was... So I guess the way that my brain works is I'm a very, like, one-track mind kind of person. So, like, I kind of like, get my thing, and I just really go hard at it. So like when I was like seven, I would like read books like eight hours a day. Like I just read all the time. 
And then when I found guitar, literally I was 13 years old practicing scales for eight hours a day. That was just my thing. And I always kind of just jumped through different phases or whatever growing up. <laughs> it's, a, it's a separate, yeah. Uh, but when I found like producing, I was like, holy crap, this is like a huge creative tool. Like I can make so much stuff with so many different kinds of people in different styles and like different, there's just so much freedom and creativity with that. Um, and once I kind of like developed that skill set, I was like, dang, like I'm kind of good at this. Um, that to me was like, the reason I do music is man, like I found something that's like really fun. I'm really good at it. And like, it's the kind of thing where I, I've literally been in the studio since 7am this morning. I've been here for 13 hours straight. And it's like, I can come in and just work all day and get so totally engrossed in something. And it's like, it doesn't feel like work. It's really fun. And the idea of like, man, like I can do all of that, have fun, make a living, improve people's lives, like write songs or produce songs. Like people like are impacted. Like I've been impacted by songs. I hope that songs I make have impacted people or will impact people. And so to be able to do all of those things, um, it's just super cool. It's a huge privilege. Yeah, that's so sweet. Um, and we want to give you, <laughs> we want to give you guys plenty of time to play, but, um, before you guys start, do you want to kind of explain, um, about your EP coming out and what it's about and all that fun stuff? Yes, I really do want to do that. <laughs> okay, so um, we have we have an EP coming out um, with, with two singles. You have an EP coming out. It's a Noah Flourish. It is. A, it's a Noah Flourish EP, but Ross produced. Yes. Um, and so I have this EP coming out, and it's called A Book of Stories. And every song on this EP um has a different story in it which is really really cool i don't i haven't like seen a concept ep or album really anything like this before um so it's just like exciting to do something that no one that i know at least or i know of has done um and on it are there's five songs and each song has like its, its own set of characters and a storyline and putting it together i think we decided that this was like a concept we would go for back in February. It feels, I think it was a February. So we, a while ago when we decided to um, kind of put this project together and geez, the amount of hours that have gone into it, not only with the song production, but with like outside projects like lyric videos and music videos and kind of everything that, that goes into a process like this that you, you don't really think about as a listener or as a viewer. Um, which I am, and like this, this is my first time doing such an in-depth and like multimedia project. You know, I'm working with a bunch of different teams on these music videos and blah, blah, blah. And it's exciting, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's keeping me super, super busy. Um, so we're really excited for this release. We'll play two of, those, two of those five songs tonight, or I will play two of those songs. Um, and then Ross and I will play two together that we've already released. But yeah, Book of Stories, it's going to come out um, on the 31st. Um, and we got two singles for the next two Fridays coming out from that EP. Too. So keep your eyes out for those. Yeah, I say it every time you put out a new song, but I always say, like, this is Noah's best stuff yet, I promise. Uh, and I really, I really do believe that. I think this is the most creatively, artistically complete body of work you've ever made. I completely agree. Um, it's sweet. It's so much fun. Yeah. No, it's it's... I'm very excited for everybody else to hear it because I've just been hoarding these songs on my computer for four months now right. or whatever. So right. I'm excited for everybody else to hear them. Yeah. That's awesome. How do you describe like the style of them? Are they like mainly acoustic kind of stuff or? They, they definitely live in a more acoustic sound space. Um, like I'm not electrono hot pop or anything like that. I would say, I would say, um, like indie, somewhere between folk and pop, mm. but definitely more pop leaning. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah. Indie acoustic pop, that kind of world. That's where we fit in really nicely. But you have to, you also have to consider with a with a EP like this where you're storytelling. You also kind of want to immerse your listener in a place for each of these songs, you know, just like setting the scene in an actual story. 
So for each song, there's a lot of, I guess, different soundscapes going on. So for the first song, um, which I'll actually be playing, I play it on a ukulele in the actual in the actual song, and I'll be playing it on a ukulele tonight. Um, but we have a bunch of sort of island type sounds because this it's about this guy named Robinson Crusoe. And then the next song is a totally different story, and the first sound you hear is like the airplane seatbelt noise because the whole that whole story takes place on an airplane, and and so. It, it each song has a, has its own flair in that sense, but they all sort of exist within this sort of indie folk pop world. That's sweet. Yeah, I'm gonna it, honestly, it's gonna be dope. Oh, I'm so <laughs> but yeah, I'll play two of those songs. I'll play two of those songs uh, tonight for y'all. Cool. Awesome. Well, I think, uh, thank you guys for coming on the show. And uh, yeah, I think uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get, let's get this music going. Cool. Dope. Okay. So we're going to start with a song called Shelter. Sweet. Um, which is <laughs> one that, geez, I wrote last fall. You're doing a guitar. I wrote last fall um, for a, a good friend of mine. Her name's Jackie Maldonado. She actually does all my cover art. Um, and she was kind of going through it, like her dog had died that week and, um, work was kind of kicking her butt. And I remember texting her, I said, Hey Jackie, when it rains, it pours. And when it pours, it storms. And then in the back of my mind, I was like, Ooh, it was a really good song lyric. So I ended up writing this song in like a day and showing it to her the next day. And she said, it really helped her out. And then earlier this spring, Ross and I decided it, it was the right time to drop that song. So we put it together. Um, yeah, and this is what it sounds like. Here we go. Things don't always work out, do they? And you can't help it if the rules change. It might feel like it is too late. You try and try and try until you break. Cause when it rains, it pours. And when it pours, ooh, it storms. So come in dorms. You will be mine and I will be your shelter anytime in need. You can come to me, baby, let me be your comfort when you're on your knees. You best believe I can set you free or shelter any time you need. You can come to me, baby, let me be your number when you're on your knees. I can set you free. I, I, I can set you free. I, I, I can set you free. No one listens like they used to. No one understands the pain. And it felt like only you knew You were stranded in the rain Cause when it rains, it pours And when it pours, ooh, it storms So come in door You will be mine and I will be your Shelter in time and heat You can come to me, baby, let me be Comfort when you're on your knees, when well, you best believe I can set you free or shelter in time to You can come to me, baby, let me be your comfort when you're on your knees, when well, you best believe I can set you free. I, I, I can set you free. I, I, I can set you free. Yeah, that's good. That's not as good an ending there. Uh, so yeah, that was Shelter. That song's been out for a while. Check it out if you, if you like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right? That seems like the right thing to say. Okay, so this next song, the next two songs I'm going to be singing are actually songs from the EP. Um, this first one is called Robinson Crusoe. Ross, you want to switch I'm, seats for this? Or? I was going to say, I could just exit stage left if you want to. Can you fit over there? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's not true. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um... So this, this song is called Robinson Crusoe. It's actually the first song 
um, on the track list. Um, and it's about this fella named Robinson Crusoe. He's actually, it's a, there's a whole novel about him. He was like one of the OG novels. And he is sort of like the archetypal getting stranded on a desert island um, guy. So I, I had this book when I was younger called The Swiss Family Robinson. It was a picture book that was based off of Robinson Crusoe's adventures, but it was a whole family. So it was more like enjoyable for the whole family to read. Um, and I wrote, I ended up kind of finding inspiration from that book my freshman year of college. So that's when I wrote this. And this is what it sounds like. Shipwrecked on an island reef and swam onto the shore to an island I found unlike any I had seen before. You see, I've traveled near and far and conquered many lands, but the ocean took all that I have and washed it on the sand. I made myself a tree house from an oak that I cut down and nailed it to another to give my feet up off the ground. I fished the cove for food to eat and coconuts for what to drink. My frontier right in front of me, my head is in the sand. Cause I am Robinson Crusoe and I've sailed the seven seas. And I've kissed the seven daughters of Rome. I am Robinson Crusoe, and I've sailed the seven seas. But honestly, I want to go home. The days are long alone out here. The nights are longer still. No woman keeps me company, so there's plenty of time to kill. I spend my days walking the beach and twice a day I swim. I got myself more company. I spend all day with him. I say my prayers before I sleep just to hear my voice. I wish someone would answer back. I wish I'd hear some noise. Oh, now the only thing about the night that keeps me satisfied. Are the stars that point homeward bound? And in my dreams I fly, cause I am Robinson Crusoe. And I've sailed the seven seas, and I've kissed the seven daughters of Rome. I am Robinson Crusoe, oh, and I've sailed the seven seas. But honestly, I want to go home. Myself a raft one day. The moment do I flow the open sea? It's killing me. A current take me home. A current take me home. Because I am Robinson Crusoe. I've sailed the seven seas, and I've kissed the seven daughters of Rome. I am Robinson Crusoe, oh, 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 and I've sailed the seven seas. But honestly, I want to go home. That's Robinson Crusoe. Um, I'm thinking we might only have time for one more song. Uh, so. Maybe we just do On Your Mind. That song's too fun to not play. Okay, so that's the only song I'm going to play from the EP tonight. Uh, but Book of Stories coming out on the, on the 31st. Yeah, keep an eye out for that. Okay, so this is a song. This is a song um, I wrote. Geez, I don't know. I think it was also freshman year of college. Um, and it's just a... It's just so fun to it's play a banger, and sing. Dude, yeah, honest. it's great. It's actually my most popular song right now. It's called On Your Mind. Um, and this is what it sounds like. 
In comparison to Paris, you lie like the city of lights, and you fight like my parents about who and what and when. And you barely even shared it. Good night to the pretty old sky, and good night to the terrace where we knew what we've been. And your mind is just like this is to die. What a pity to die without getting to cherish all the things you left behind. And I know you know what fair is. So why would you sit there and cry like you might have to bear this? Like you'd even have to try. I know for a fact I'm on your mind like all the time. And when you get back to being fine, then I'm your guy. In the valley, there's a river that moves like a snake, how it glides and it slithers away in a way that makes it seem to only grow bigger. There's a boat upon this river. There's a moving away from the winter. And I'd be most pleased to go with her. <laughs> But I know that I'm stuck on you, and you are stuck on me. I don't know what to do, because you did this to me. It's a cello here. Da 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 Thanks so much again to Noah and Ross for coming on the show and turning the Culture Committee into a mini concert. So yeah, once again, their new EP, Book of Stories, is dropping July 31st, so make sure to check that out. This has been the Star City Culture Committee, um, the Daily Nebraskan Lincoln Culture Podcast. As always, I'm David Berman, and I am joined by my co-hosts, Mark Champion and Jenna Thompson. All right, till next time, see you around Star City.